Welcome to the 2019 to 2020 National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting Training Video Series. This series is delivered by the Clean Energy Regulator and aims to help you report under the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting Act 2007, also known as the ENGA Act. This video will cover working with the entity structure in EARS. There is a range of terms used in this video that have a specific meaning, including Clean Energy Regulator, ENGA, ENGA Act, and EARS. To learn what each of these means, please refer to the video Introduction to the Clean Energy Regulator and ENGA from the ENGA training video series available by following the links at the end of this video. This video will cover using EARS to create an entity, delete an entity, change a parent entity, and manage part year operational control for existing facilities. First, how to create an entity in EARS. A number of different entities can be created in EARS to reflect your corporate structure. Group members and business units are used to show the way the business is arranged and which entity within the organization is responsible for a facility. Group members and business units do not have emissions or energy data associated with them. Emissions and energy data is reported for facilities, facility aggregates, and networks and pipelines, assuming that the relevant reporting thresholds are triggered. The reporting thresholds are defined in the ENGA Act. We'll now demonstrate how to create an entity in EARS. In this example, we are creating a group member. For more information on how to create a facility, please refer to the links under More Guidance at the end of this video for related videos and guidance documents. Log into EARS and navigate to the Data Entry tab in the top left menu. To create an entity, click on the Add Entity button on the left of the screen under your corporate structure. A pop-up window will appear, which will allow you to select the type of entity you wish to create. In this example, a group member. You will then select the parent entity for the group member you are creating. This is the entity that directly owns the group member. In this example, we've chosen the controlling corporation, meaning this group member sits immediately beneath the controlling corporation in its corporate structure. If the group member you're creating is a subsidiary of another member in the controlling corporation's corporate group, you would select that group member from the drop-down menu. Next, select the relevant Relationship to Parent Entity option by choosing either Full Year or Part Year from the drop-down menus. The remaining field requires you to enter the name of the entity. This should be the group member's legal name. Once you have completed all the required details, you will save your new entity. The entity will appear in the corporate structure. The main screen will display the organizational information entered previously. Additional information related to identifying details and address will need to be entered here. You must provide an ABN, ACN or ARBN for the group member. If you do not have any of these, you must provide a trading name and street address. Next, how to delete an entity in EARS. First, select the entity you wish to delete from your corporate structure on the left of the screen, then click on the Edit Details button at the top right. Scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click on the Remove button in the bottom right corner. A dialog box will appear asking you to confirm that you wish to delete the entity. Be careful when deleting entities from your EARS workspace. When you delete an entity, any entities below it in the corporate structure will also be deleted, along with all data associated with these entities. For example, if you delete a group member that has several facilities with data attached to it, the group member and all attached facilities will be deleted. If you're sure you wish to delete this entity, click the Yes button. The entity will then be removed from the corporate structure. We encourage reporters to check their corporate structure in EARS each year to ensure it is accurate and to make amendments where information is not correct. As well as creating and deleting entities, reporters can change their corporate structure by changing the parent entity of a facility or group member. While editing the details of the facility or group member, click on the Parent Entity drop-down menu and select the controlling corporation or the appropriate group member to become the new parent entity. After clicking Save, the updated corporate structure will display on the left of the screen. 
In some circumstances, a reporter may not have to report a facility's emissions and energy data for the full reporting period. This will occur when a reporter has not had operational control over the facility for the entire year, for example, because the facility was acquired partway through the reporting period, or operations were handed to another entity before the end of a reporting period. For more information on how to create a new facility with part year operational control, please see the training video on How to Create a Facility in EARS, available by following the links at the end of this video. In the following example, the controlling corporation has relinquished operational control over an existing facility partway through the reporting period. This will result in changing details for an existing facility in EARS. To change the period of operational control from full year to part year for an existing facility, first select the facility from the corporate structure on the left of the screen, then click on the Edit Details button at the top right. You will need to change the relationship to parent entity from Operational Control Full Year to Operational Control Part Year. Once Operational Control Part Year has been selected, EARS will display new fields under the heading Days of Operation. To enter the relevant dates, first click on the Add New Period button. You will be required to enter a start and end date of the period of operational control. The start date must be either on or after the beginning of the reporting period. The end date must be either on or before the end of the reporting period. Select the start and end dates from the pop-up calendar. The number of days of operational control will be calculated automatically and appear to the right. Multiple periods of operational control can be entered for a facility if required. Once you have entered all the required details for the facility, click on the Save button on the bottom right to save your changes. This video is from the 2019 to 2020 ENGA training video series. This series aims to help you in your obligations to report under the ENGA Act. To access these videos, visit our website at www.cleanenergyregulator.gov.au. After accessing the Our Systems, Logins and Guidance tab, Click Learn More under the Emissions and Energy Reporting System subheading. Then on the sidebar, navigate to Tools to Assist You, then Training Videos. These videos are supplemented by written guidance documents also available on the Clean Energy Regulator website. After accessing the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting tab, click on Forms and Resources, then on Guides and Fact Sheets in the sidebar. These documents give more technical or specialised insight into a wide range of specific topics around reporting under ENGA and using EARS. We also provide calculators to support reporters, available on our website through the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting tab under Forms and Resources. These calculators help reporters produce accurate ENGA reports and include those for assessing corporate reporting obligations, estimating uncertainty in emissions, and estimating emissions from solid waste and wastewater operations. For more information or help with reporting under the ENGA scheme, please contact us by calling 1300 553 542, emailing us at reporting at cer.gov.au, or visiting our website at www.cleanenergyregulator.gov.au. This video has been developed by the Clean Energy Regulator to assist persons to comply with their reporting obligations under the ENGA Act for the 2019 to 2020 reporting period. This video should be viewed in conjunction with the ENGA Act and supporting regulations and determination. Changes to legislation may affect the information in this video. The examples used in this video are for illustrative purposes only. This video is not intended to provide legal advice. If persons have concerns or questions about the application of legislation in their particular circumstances, they should seek professional advice.